Well, hi, this is Melinda tankard Reist. I'm the Movement Director for Collective Sharp for a World Free of Sexploitation. And I'm about to have the pleasure of uh, interviewing uh, Talitha Stone. And Talitha has been running our... I've just... Talitha initiated the Change.org uh, petition called Drop the Fine and let them wear shorts and uh, the aim of this petition was to pressure the International Handball Federation into dropping the fine uh, for the Norwegian female beach handball team who dared to swap their tiny bikini bottoms and play instead in shorts for the Euro uh, 21 competition in Spain recently. So here we have a Talitha who is joining us live in Norway. Um, Talitha, yeah. it is very good to see you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Talitha, would you like to tell us, and thanks everyone who's joined, why you felt so strongly about this issue? Why you put your name to this a global change.org petition? What did you feel when you saw that this team uh, had not only been fined, but threatened with disqualification for playing in something they felt comfortable in. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous <laughs> that this is still something that we're dealing with. And I just felt, as a sportswoman myself, just that when you're playing sport, that's what you want to be able to concentrate on. And the fact that there was no choice for the women to wear something that they feel is more practical and comfortable for them is just ridiculous. And I was so outraged by it that I want to also be able to change these rules and set a better example for the young women that are really looking up to sports women and want to follow in their footsteps. And I want to see them being able to feel more comfortable and yeah, not be afraid to join a sport because they feel uncomfortable in the clothing that they're required to wear. Yeah. And do you want to tell supporters who are listening in, what, what are the men allowed to wear? And yeah, in comparison to, to the women, what do the men wear? Yeah, so the men are allowed to wear shorts and a T-shirt. And mm -hmm. the women are told they have to wear a bikini bottom that is 10 centimetres wide with an upward cut and a tight fit. Yeah. Is it surprising to you that we are still dealing with these backward and regressive and sexist requirements in the 21st century when we've had a global women's movement, when there's all this talk about equality and fair treatment of women? Does this surprise you, Talitha, that we're still dealing with this? Yeah, it really does. And I'm shocked that there still seems to be so hard to change these rules and like we're still getting met with so much like reservation from the organizations and they they're so like oh i don't know i mean yeah we want to change these but you know there's a lot of things we have like hoops we have to jump through to change these rules and mm -hmm. and we really have to keep respecting that yeah. this is how things have always been and i just yeah. think that's so strange that why are we still trying to keep these sexist rules around women. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Who does it? Who does it serve? It certainly doesn't serve women. No. As a young athlete, you're a you're a triathlete. You uh, you you run. You bike. You hike. How important <laughs> is comfortable, functional, practical clothing to a young woman like yourself who is just you know, yeah. highly uh, athletic and, and, and loves, loves the exercise. For me, it's everything. And it really determines the outcome of my performance. If I'm not comfortable, then I'm focusing on something else than my performance. And so I always make sure that I am able to wear clothes that I feel comfortable in and I feel mm -hmm. covered up in because I don't really want images of myself online that are showing parts of my body that I, I don't feel comfortable for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. So I, I choose to wear a tri suit that is long, like longer shorts. And 
yeah, I have the option. So I'm incredibly happy for that. But I just don't understand how women at elite levels don't have that option. And we know that globally, there's more and more girls opting out of playing sport completely. Mm -hmm. And yet we yeah. know the benefits physically, mentally of physical exercise. Like I know for myself, if I miss a couple of days of not going out for a walk or a run or to get to the gym or have a swim, I know what it does to me. Like it's, it's essential to my, to my well-being for letting off steam for like, I, my, I think better, you know, if I'm outside running in the bush or something. Um, mm -hmm. And yet there's so many girls that are not playing sport, certainly not playing team sport. What do you think is the reason for this? Well, I think that they're just so concerned about what like they don't even want to swim. Yeah. And it's, I think because of the way that the world is now with images being shared just so much more than what we've ever experienced before that girls are now also seeing that if they're choosing to wear a swimsuit or a uniform for a sport, that they're going to be critiqued on that. And I mean, we choose to do these sports for mental health and for a hobby and for pleasure. And the fact that women who are doing sport for a career and it's their income, and I can't even imagine the choice at that level to have to step down because of something so ridiculous as a uniform. That's right. Let's turn to your petition, drop the fine and let them wear shorts, change.org. You launched the petition on July 23rd. It's been only three weeks and two days. And if you're obsessive as I am, you've been watching every signature <laughs> ticking over. Like, yeah. I didn't sleep <laughs> over your petition, Talitha. Oh, I keep refreshing stop looking, it. Stop watch looking. It it's one up. in the morning. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Are you like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah Especially when we first launched. And you could mm. just sing it tick over and tick over. Like, I don't know what other people do for a good time, but, you know, <laughs> that's, that's what I was doing. And I'm looking right now, in fact, and we are 59,718. How did it feel for you personally, knowing you'd put your name to this, knowing it had gone live globally, to see those signatures tick over so fast? How did that make you feel? Well, it just makes me feel that this is something that a lot of people care about. Yeah, And that a lot of people think it's ridiculous and that it's, it is important. So it made me feel really good about putting my name to it and promoting it and saying that, yeah, this really should be something that's changed. That's fantastic. Now, I believe that you have had a response from the bosses at the International Handball Federation. Yeah. Do you want to just summarise how they responded and... Yeah. Did that make you feel a bit hopeful that something could shift this year? Mm. Well, they said that they're very aware of the global discussion around this and that they are working on alternatives and presenting them to the IHF Council and then to the Congress, but that they still need to respect the rules around the regulations with uniform. So, I mean, yeah, it's they're not ignoring it, which is a good thing. And they are very happy to respond about it. Um, but I just hope that this doesn't just die out and that because the pressure is then off them eventually when the things start to quiet down a bit that they just think, oh, maybe this is something that's not really that important to change. So I think it needs follow up and yeah, yeah I, going to keep putting the pressure on them to actually yes. act on this response that they've given. Yep. So I understand that it, it is on their meeting agenda for November. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to everyone out there watching, we need your signature. If you haven't signed yet, please, it'll only take you a few seconds to back Talitha Stone to make sure the pressure stays on until that November meeting. Mm. So that you just can't quietly slip off the agenda. Talitha yeah. will hold them accountable. We're at 59,718. Why can't we get this to 75,000? I see no reason. 
Yeah. There's so much sure. concern now. You've had global media attention. The pressure is on. Please, everyone, don't think these petitions don't count. I can tell you they do. Uh, we have been involved in a significant number now and we have seen multiple wins as a result in our campaigning since we started 10 years ago. Talitha, do you want to tell us about another campaign you headed up here in Australia before you tragically left the country for Norway? <laughs> uh, do you want to tell us about the time that you actually went undercover and tried out for the Lingerie Football League? Tell us why, why you did that and what happened. That was an interesting experience. Um, <laughs> oh, it was really important to me to expose the Laundry Football League and what I did end up experiencing at the tryouts just really affirmed to me why it should be shut down and why it was just incredibly degrading to women. So I turned up to the tryout and I, it looked like I was lining up to go to a club like the women were just completely decked out with hair and makeup done and fake tan. And I felt pretty insecure when I, when mm -hmm. I walked up to there because I'm like, okay, I definitely don't look like all of these girls that are trying out. And they all had a very similar image about them. And you had the strength. You had the athletic ability. You certainly yeah, had the muscle. But I didn't think that that was going to be enough. You didn't, you didn't conform to yeah. the highly sexualized representation that yeah. these women were expected to present yeah. and i believe that uh, you were handed a contract that said you had to agree to accidental nudity yep and we actually had to present a like a full body picture to them and they said that the requirement uniform for the tryout was to wear a sports bra and sh and just shorts like you weren't supposed to be wearing long pants. You weren't supposed to be wearing a top that covered up. And, yeah, I, and this is a highly aggressive game, right? Yeah. It's yeah, like it is. Like <laughs> Yeah. And you're playing in your the, freaking undies, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, and oh, you're playing on that fake grass stuff, which burns. Like yeah. I would and want I, to cover up my whole body so I don't end up getting burns all over me. That's right. And I believe that you were expected to try to, to rip what little clothing they had on off. Is that yeah, correct? It, yeah, you were encouraged to be very aggressive against yeah. the other women. Like that was just the constant theme. It was just grotesque language and aggression and just trying to fire you up. And I just remember ending up having to do things that I really wasn't comfortable with because I felt this pressure to, to give them what they were asking for. Yeah, And I just remember apologising, being like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, but I, I didn't mm. really know what else to do when they're yeah. telling me that I had to just charge and be aggressive and just grab them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At, at any stage, did you think, oh, this is really an authentic women's sport or uh, quite the opposite? <laughs> no, because there was a big focus on capturing women at certain angles so when we were doing the warm-up and had to run around the track there were cameramen lying on their backs facing the camera up to get a crutch shot of us running over the top of them and there was just this constant pep talk about you know if you get on this team and the night that you are playing your first game you're presenting yourself to Australia so you you need to look hot and you need to look sexy so turn up half an hour before the game so we can do you up with hair and makeup and so that it was just this constant thing about looking hot and looking sexy and nothing about your sporting ability. Yeah. Well, in the end, we were quite relieved that you didn't make it through to the final team because we hadn't kind of worked did. out our game plan. Oh, my yeah. gosh. What if she gets That's through? It. I know. <laughs> yeah, that would have been interesting. <laughs> but um, we did have a really good outcome, didn't we? Because uh, yeah, we did. It, it was dumped. The TV broadcast was dumped. Yeah. And... I'm pretty sure I haven't seen them back in Australia since then. No, I haven't seen anything. So that was a great actually. outcome. Yeah, it was. And it was, a, it was also a hell of a lot of fun, just saying. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just to, uh, to summarise, keep sharing that petition. This issue yeah. has not finished. And just think, if, if Talitha is successful in getting this rule change when the International Handball Federation meets in 
November. This can have flow on effects for so much of women's sport, you know, mm. seriously. For example, beach volleyball, um, we saw the uh, German gymnastics team decide to play in a, a one-piece unitard, uh, which is, you know, quite, quite radical uh, for that sport mm -hmm. as well. This will have flow on effects. Hopefully other sporting bodies around the world will revise their uh, regressive backwards sexist codes and hopefully ultimately more girls will decide to play sport yeah. and realise the strength of their bodies, what their bodies can do, realise the health benefits without worrying about unwanted exposure, being hypervigilant, about rashes, about sand in intimate places, uh, about unwanted photos, unwanted attention, sexual harassment. Like, yeah, you and have to be, be on the cusp of something. Yeah. Like, that With, other, the other female teammates have to be on tampon watch because they're like, that's just something that you shouldn't exactly. have to be with. Exactly. Tampon watch, right? Girls shouldn't have to worry about that kind of unwanted exposure when they're yeah. menstruating. Yeah. So please, I think we need to all think about this. We could be on the verge of something quite radical here, mm. a dramatic cultural change that needs to happen uh, for the sake of all women who love their sport mm. uh, and for all, all girls that should be playing sport. Uh, so please get behind Talitha. Any final words, Talitha, you'd like to say to, to support us? Uh, just thank you so much for the support. And I think sometimes we sign a petition and then we can forget about it. But it's really important to keep sharing this and to keep showing people that this is something that is still happening and we do need to keep the pressure on. So, yeah, just to, yeah, keep sharing. It would be amazing. Fantastic. Please support uh, Talitha. What she's done is really gutsy and brave and we love the brave girls. So please support Talitha. Uh, be part of this, this global change that is so needed. Hashtag is let them wear shorts. You can follow our Talitha's campaign that we are backing through the let them wear shorts uh, hashtag and go to the petition, which you can find at change.org. The petition is called drop the fine and let them wear shorts. And my colleagues have dropped the link uh, into the chat, uh, but we're all over all the socials. So you can find us there and we'd love your support for all of our campaigns. Collective shout.org is our website. Uh, we're on uh, all the, all the socials. Um, Tealitha, it is just a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much. Stay yeah. safe, stay Thank well, you. and let's win this. <laughs> yep. Good on you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>